You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. In this week's episode, Danny and Brittany are going to be talking about biblical sex ethics. Yeah, you heard me right. Biblical sex ethics. It's a much needed conversation and it starts right now. Welcome to The Kylo Show. We are here another week talking about all sorts of good things. Talking about dating these days. Yes, there's a lot of dating and engagement talk that we've had the last few weeks. Yeah. It's going good. I mean, I I think that we're helping people. We're we're exploring some stuff. We are. We're, I think, maybe confronting some things, some belief systems, helping people get some clarity, Mm -hmm. holding the line in a way that maybe they haven't viewed as, as important or maybe didn't have the verbiage you know, or something to point to. So that's really the goal. Sometimes it's permission. Like I just didn't have permission. I thought I was doing the wrong thing by doing the right thing, Mm. which is a whole bunch of what's going on these days is, uh, I think it's Isaiah five talks about how in those days, evil will be called good and good evil and sweet will be called sour and sour will be called sweet. And you just introduce so much perversion Mm -hmm. that nobody can tell what the original design was because everything has been looks like looks like a junkyard. You're like you're just walking through this scrapyard and you ever see the cars they sometimes get they get those junk guys get bored and just build a car out of every part yeah. in the it feels like that it feels like oh my gosh this is this is what bored people do it just feels the that truth's been distorted from its original form. oh my gosh it's so bad and so now you you get that in school you get that in entertainment mm-hmm. now it's you know it's showing up in sports it's uh it's all over politics it's so confusing. And now do that for two, three, four, five decades mm-hmm. and be a child that grew up raised by parents who grew up in it. And so now we're on the third generation of culture confusion. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, the believers, the you know, the people that are going to churches are all affected by it in a in a dramatic way as well and and we end up with a, a pandemic of confusion <laughs> you know where we don't even know what's true anymore mm-hmm. which which is which is a indictment on the pulpit really mm-hmm. it's an indictment on christian culture is that the people don't even know what the bible says they don't even know what is biblical mm-hmm. truth mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah, I I remember even having this discussion with Delaney and making sure that we're doing, you know, the don't awaken love too early. Mm-hmm. You know, and and really trying to define to her what that means and looks like in the world that she's faced in. Mm-hmm. And then even go a step further having this conversation at a level for a 9-year-old mm-hmm. because there's a world at, from video games to YouTube videos that are have a attempting to have a good moral story, but still is what's on display is toxic mm-hmm. and yucky. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, if you're not paying attention to fight against it to get, bring truth and clarity, you just kind of get swept away in it, yeah. and then before you know, you're downriver, and you, it's really hard to fight a current. Yeah. And so when we address the issue of of uh, biblical ethics or sexual ethics, mm-hmm. biblical, you begin to wonder, well, what does that even mean? Because it's not like we agree on it as Christians. <laughs> Which, that's just a crazy statement. We it, can't it, agree on biblical ethics around sex. <laughs> you can't, because at this point, you know, three generations deep of antichrist, mm-hmm. like you, you can do whatever you want. In this society, that is anti what the Bible says, or, or anti 
Christ-like and be applauded. Mm. You just pick one. Just pick anything you want to do that's anti-Christ-like. But if you choose Christ-like, you'll be mocked and harassed and accused. So people, a lot of people that are, you know, kind of, they don't like conflict, they don't like rejection, they'll just keep adjusting, keep adjusting, keep adjusting, keep adjusting until they're over here applauding anti-Christ behavior and mocking Christ-like behavior as religious. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're just being religious. religious yeah. Like, well, Christ-like, one, two, one, two. I mean, there is a bunch of religious garbage out there that I'd be the first one to swat at. But Christ-like behavior, no, mm-hmm. no. And the standards of sexuality in the Bible are there to protect us, mm-hmm. to set us up for the best experience that sex has to offer. Not, you know, what the world's wagging at everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's just oh, it's so sad. You know, I, I we did a purity ring, Ben and I, separately which was part of our exchange at our wedding. But I don't hear about purity rings much these days. Yeah. It, or, or purity as a goal. Yeah. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's purity is a, it, it is kind of this fantasy thought that it's naive. Yeah. And, it's uh, unrealistic. Know, it's silly. Everybody's going to do it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, that's, that's a shame that, that you've given up mm-hmm. on, hoping for your your child's purity yeah and and even seeing you know the singles that i'm around i don't know any of them that talk about a purity ring i can think of one friend that i've had that was single just recently got married 30 years old that had a purity ring and as as some loud thing that was you know talked about or even even submitting accountability to protecting purity and being a part of the process, and I, sh- I just don't, I don't have anyone really finding me to help them mm-hmm. keep that standard, mm-hmm. which is kind of shocking yeah. now that I think yeah, about it. It's a symptom. If you are good friends with me and you're single, mm-hmm. I welcome it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saying it on the Kylo show, but please, <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll send out a text later. Yeah. Hey, I want to help champion this in your life. Yeah, when it comes to pornography, cohabitation, divorce, abortion. Uh, homosexuality, you know, you look through the uh, Christian culture, and in some of those areas, a majority of those surveyed mm. have come over to, yeah, what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. Like, well, besides it's anti-biblical, mm-hmm. besides that, oh, well, whatever, I, I don't know what we're talking about now. So that's a chunk of what's fueling this next generation, which is, ah, you know, just to each his own. If it feels good, do it. And uh, everybody's doing it. So So what's the point? I don't want to be weird. Right. Which is crazy to look at. I mean, I think about just even porn in itself of how often it's participated in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you just said before, you know, the polls across the board of all those different topics, there's more and more Christians that are participating. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find males that aren't participating because it's on your phone. It's everywhere. It's and it's just inundation mm-hmm. of it, it it feels like sugar. Like sugar is in everything. Yes. Like I don't eat sugar. Yeah, you do. Have it's you had ketchup? ketchup. <laughs> yeah. You know. Good grief! It's just everywhere. So it's so hard for a little boy to come up in today's society and not just be hammered with all the little opportunity morsels on the way to the witch's house in the forest for Hansel and Gretel. You know, boys and girls are just being led to the slaughter. Unless there's somebody that's going to raise up a standard, you know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard, and that's that's adults, you know, the dating adults, somebody Mm -hmm. is going to have to say, you know what, my goal is purity, and my goal is really to 
fight back against the brainwashing mm -hmm. of the deceiver. And so that's how you end up with somebody that is going where you're going is you raise up a standard and people are actually attracted to each other's standards. Mm -hmm. And a standard was a, a flag on a pole, you know, mm -hmm. in the day. You know, like you raise that up and you can see it over the crowd. You're like, oh, let's head that direction. Yeah. There, there's our standard. And that's got to be on your standard if you're protecting mm -hmm. Christ-likeness in the culture of your relationships. Yeah. I think about um, my exposure to just having a relationship with someone that wasn't a, a, a Jesus follower, and then on the heels of that, uh, finding Ben, you know, so much of the relationship I was in that wasn't modeled anything biblically, <laughs> you know, was compromise, compromise, compromise. And so the, the concept of you attract who you are, well, that's who I was in that season. Yeah, yeah. And I said yes to that. Yeah. So that's the problem is in doesn't mean that I didn't have a value. I mean, I was walking away from the Lord at the moment, but didn't have a, a value for those things. It was in there. It was very buried. But I said yes to this, where when I got out of the mud and came back to the Lord, all those things that I have shaped and grown in my life were still there because God's redeeming so, mm -hmm, so good. Mm -hmm. And then there was Ben. Mm -hmm. And so I got to say yes to that and then no to this other thing. Mm -hmm. So that's the big difference of you attract who you are. You don't have to say yes to all the mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. That's the part that makes us powerful. Uh, Romans 1, it, it, uh, it kind of lays out that God's nature and God's intentions are in creation and and the wickedness of humanity uh, verse 18 deliberately smothers the truth and keeps people from acknowledging the truth about god uh, it, it, it it's it's a it's a shocking read i don't know when the last time somebody read romans 1 but it puts on display what's happening you know, to the searing of the conscience, where I look at something that is good and I call it evil. Mm. I look at something evil and I call it good. You're like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> and it's because wickedness has smothered the truth about who God is, what's important to God, and how am I ever going to protect the heart of my father, if I don't even know what's important to him. Yeah. I am trying to protect what's important to the world, violating what's so important to my father, because I, I allowed the smothering of truth. And, and then the first place where it shows up is in worship, mm. that people no longer actually worship God they begin to worship themselves and other idols and images. And this is the, it's not new. There's nothing new about it. It's been going on forever. Yes. But in our society, we're like, oh, we don't, we don't have idols and images Old and statues, worshiping. Yeah. Mm. yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You worship everything besides God. You can go to church and mouth the words, but then when you walk out, you're, your image and your idols are all protected. They're all lined up on your little shelf there, your little altar that you built. You're like, we don't have an altar in our house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. It's called a television. It's called a phone. Mm -hmm. It's called your closet. It's called your garage. You, know, you, you have this scene in your life that you want to be projected and identified as and then protected. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody around me to protect me. And one of them is what you think of my sexuality. Hmm. I want you to have a favorable impression of my sexuality. I'm not some prude. I'm not some religious prude. Hmm. No, no, you're a... What? What, 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 I, what do you, you want to insert there? Yeah, yeah, what? Because it's not missing out or naive or whatever, it's actually protecting your father's heart. It's protecting the intimacy between you and the one that you call your Lord and the one who rules in your life. The way that you 
protect your ruler is you find out what the rules are. And the top rule is love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then love other people. It's nothing about loving the world or protecting the standards of the world in your life. And this is, this is the showdown we're living in. Yeah. So if you're dating in this world right now, sexuality is the battlefield. Yeah. I just think about, you know, how do you not have sexual ethics that are biblical and not be a follower of Jesus? Like, you have to, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, that's the next thing that's got to be right there. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't play with the lines. They're, they're not, you know, a buffet line of I'll take this and not that. It's, it's all or nothing. And, and your sexuality is evidence of the tenderness of your heart towards God. Mm-hmm. In order for you to practice immoral sexuality, immoral, oh, strike that. Let me back up. In order for you to practice sexual immorality, you have to harden your heart towards your father. Mm-hmm. Because you know that what you're doing is wrong. You know that what you're doing is twisted up. And it's not what your father is, is leading you in. It's you're doing whatever you want to do. You're doing whatever you have to do to survive that situation or, that, or your relationship. You're avoiding confrontation and upholding the standard again. And now you've ended up in a situation that you didn't even want to be in. Yeah. Well, there's a battle that these these singles and ones dating are facing that is loud, loud and aggressive. Yeah. You know, and I think about the description of idols and what they look like today. You know, I th- I really just believe that the the conviction of what is the attention that you give to the phone, the TV, like you said, but mm-hmm. when you first wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. what is the first thing you're searching for? Mm-hmm. I, I think that would reveal, even if there is something to your heart of seeking justification, seeking praise, but not from the truth of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Is it is it man? Is it a, a, a text response? Is it, you know, what what is this thing that you're searching for when you first wake up mm-hmm. each morning, it's a battlefield, mm. you know. And and but we pick up momentum in one direction or the other. Mm. And uh, there, you know, there's there's lots of lots of ways to surround yourself with health and and to pursue getting the deepest needs of your heart met. In worship, really. I mean, that is going to be where it continually comes back to is I found freedom in the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And when I take a break, <laughs> that's that's where I'm vulnerable mm-hmm. and most likely to find myself in a ditch. Yeah. I, I just keep thinking to lean in for these singles, to lean in to being a follower of Jesus. Yeah, and surround yourself with people who are holding up a standard. Mm -hmm. And if you fall, when you fall, whatever, that there is a a way to recover and there's a way to stay in the the fight and not just be a casualty of making a mistake. Just not giving up to a lie that says, well, whatever. Yeah, and you know, there we go back to mm-hmm. Life Academy. You, you know, go get go get the new Unpunishable mm-hmm. series that's out, and and go through that and mm-hmm. understand the difference between a relationship with God as a judge dealing with a criminal and God as a father dealing with his child. Yeah, well, so good. All right, singles and dating, okay. we believe in you. New standard. All right. Well, we're going to jump into questions next. Cool. All right. See you soon. I want to talk to you about being a Life Academy facilitator. 
you can lead a Life Academy course in your area. It's free and it's easy. To learn more about being a Life Academy facilitator, go to lovingonpurpose.com and click courses to lead a class today. Okay, so we're going to jump into questions. Like always, the kyloshow.com. If you have a question or testimony, send it our way. Okay, so this first one is from Lauren. Hi, Danny and Brittany. Thank you so much for doing the Kylo Show. It's changed my life in so many ways. I have a question for you guys. My fiance's brother is gay, and I am struggling on what it looks like to keep my love on towards him. Do I invite his partner to our wedding? Uh, what do I do in the future when we have kids and have to show them that we disagree with his lifestyle, but we still love him. Please share your thoughts because I'm feeling a bit powerless in this situation. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Well, well it's, you know, keeping your love on is 100%. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that... Uh, I turn it off when I disagree. It's especially, especially important that you keep it on when you disagree. Yeah. And uh, keeping my love on towards someone does not validate or affirm some agreement or whatever. It really just puts on display the Father, which is he, he loves unconditionally, and that's what most people need an encounter with is people that know how to show the Father. Mm-hmm. Do you really know how to... Love me even though we disagree or I, I, I don't I don't expect you to be Christ-like if you don't know Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, I, I want you to see, especially the, the brother-in-law in this case, is going to be a family member. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, I want them to feel like a family member. I want them to feel connected. I want I want to build a relationship with them that they want to protect yeah. because of our interactions. And I I think this is where I think some people get they emphasize the rule over the relationship. Yeah. And then they they like to blame that kind of stuff on, well, this is how God is. Like, well, that's actually not how God is at all. But God doesn't lower his standards or change his standards just because he loves you. Mm-hmm. And that's what people have got to get momentum in, mm-hmm. is I love you right through all the disagreements so that you experience for me, I love you. Yeah. I remember uh, Ben had an employer that... Uh, was a lesbian, and she was getting married, and she wanted to invite Ben, and she did. And and I remember Ben asking you this question, like, "What should I do?" And and you know, it, it was this, it was his employment. You know, it wasn't like this. And he had a beautiful relationship with the this boss. They really had a a great relationship the entire time Ben was there. And you know, it was the question of you know, what's this worth in your relationship? Mm-hmm. And Ben's like, I think it would be pretty costly. And so Ben and I went, and that's, it wasn't a, a st- statement of agreement as much as it was a statement of loving mm-hmm. and displaying that these are our beliefs. They're no secret to you, and you know our beliefs because her and Ben had had many conversations, but it was a stance of I'm going to, we're going to love, we're going to keep loving, mm-hmm. and we're going to come to this and. I think that was, he, you know, when he left, she said that was one of the most beautiful things that she had felt from him was mm-hmm. his willingness to come, even though his, yeah. she knew he didn't believe in what she was doing. Yeah, yeah, and, and that signature of the father, where everywhere you go, is exactly the, the experience people have. Is mm-hmm. I know that that wasn't something that is in your life or something that you even support, but you supported me. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Like, right. Amen. That's it. So that would be the same suggestion there is love like Jesus. Mm-hmm. All right. Our next question comes from Walker. Hi, Danny and Brittany. Thank you for doing the Kylo show. I have been struggling with porn and I will have seasons of freedom and it is great. And then I fall back into it. I want to be free of this, 
Can you tell me what to do to get free? I think that's a loaded question a little bit. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's real, and yeah. it's not going away anytime soon. As long as people still have sex drives, it's going to be there, you know. And it was there long before porn was there. It's, you know, it's long before the accessibility of it, uh, uh, social media or <laughs> yeah. any of that stuff. You know, it's been it's been forever. It's just like this is a this is a real. Uh, attribute of my design uh, but you know if I it, it's an appetite is what it is so it, you you disciple discipline your appetites if you don't want to weigh 400 pounds you discipline what you eat and how often you eat it if you don't want to be breathless after running, you know, or moving up the staircase. You discipline yourself with exercise. If you don't want a, a criminal record around alcohol, then you discipline the use of alcohol. And and you know, you if you don't want you, you, all these things. Mm-hmm. And so, if if you don't want your sexual behavior to be outside of what protects your relationship with the Lord, then you discipline, you disciple your character yourself. And that, it takes a plan, it takes um, a, a rhythm of decisions that eventually become your habits. Mm-hmm. And, that, and those habits become your character, and there you go, you're on your way. Surround yourself with people who are not commiserating about living in failure, but actually dedicated to living in victory um, is probably one of the smartest things you could do is find yourself in a band of brothers that are committed to protecting their character, their overall character, not just, you know, I, I have a sexual addiction and I'm going to be reminded of it every day, every week. It's like, maybe maybe uh, I have a goal of a victorious life mm-hmm. in my character and I'm going to be reminded of it every week as we come together. It's more the, the, the route you want to take than, than I want to, you know, I want to be surrounded and commiserate with failure mm-hmm. because eventually it just becomes a justification. Is there also a, a part in there where you need to identify uh, what triggers you to want to engage in porn? Mm-hmm. If there's a, a pain or feeling powerless or if there's something that you encounter that is the stressor that leads you to this place of feeling powerful or mm-hmm. the experience that happens there. Is, does that need to also be identified for you to have success too? Yeah. Yeah, um, I've done a lot of work with addicts over my career, and one of the things that stands out is these acronyms that uh, different groups come up with, and AA came up with an acronym of HALT. Like, you just HALT. You just HALT yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, don't let yourself get too hungry, too angry, too lonely, or too tired. Because those are all setups That's to be right. upset. You know, those are all triggers. So if you don't have a plan for those moments, mm-hmm. then your go to is alcohol. You'll check out of your life being motivated by one of those things. And so it's it's a it's about that sort of thing, like find out what those triggers are and what you're gonna do instead of. Yeah. Each each time that mm-hmm. comes up, because it's a it's a sequencing the right decisions that begins to give you righteous momentum. Mm-hmm. It's the sequencing of destructive decisions that leads you to feeling shame and yeah. feeling defeated. Yeah, that's good. I like the halt. Mm-hmm. halt. I've heard that one before. All right, this next one comes from Sue. Hey, Danny and Brittany. What about sex before marriage? I know it's frowned upon in traditional church culture, but have things changed? No. Uh, not from a biblical standpoint. <laughs> they have not changed. 
But from a cultural standpoint, all bets are off. There is no standard. Do what you want. Um, it's all about you. Yeah, it's all, all about you know your passions and uh, you know your dreams and what you want to do. And uh, with you know with the introduction of <sighs> contraception. Mm-hmm. With the introduction of abortion, with the introduction of, you know, whatever free sex is. I'm not even sure what that is. But, you know, with those being a part of the decision tree these days, it's it's like, wow, I really can be eradicated in my consequences. Yeah, no so, responsibility. So that you don't have all these pregnant ladies being shipped off to a convent somewhere because... W- Nobody knows. Nobody knows what my life and character really are, except me and God. Mm-hmm. Like, right. And that's really what's going to matter at the end of the game. It's really going to be you and the Lord standing there. It's not going to be uh, anybody who found out about your life. It's really how did you, what relationships did you protect? Mm-hmm. So, like we just said, you know, it sex. Sexuality is a battlefield for you if your life is aimed at protecting the heart of the Father. If your your life is about doing the will of God, uh, following the lead of the Holy Spirit, protecting the heart of the Father, then your life looks very different than all the excuses and standards of Babylon. Yeah. All right. It's a tough world out there, guys. It is. So we'll be praying for you, staying victorious. And, and oh, by the way, it doesn't change very much when you get married. <laughs> the options are still there. It's true. You know, so it's not like, oh, you know, you have this really unique challenge as a single. You you have the same challenge. It's now the consequences are different. But you have the same sex drive, and it's the same appetites, the and same you have selfish behavior, and you have the same disciplines, you know, that are there or aren't there, mm-hmm. that are going to protect your connections or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, good questions. We're going to jump into our testimony spot. If you were thinking about being a Life Academy facilitator, now is the perfect time. Each week we have a live facilitator call. This is where we go over best practices, build community, and it's amazing. You're going to want to be a part of it. So to learn more about being a Life Academy facilitator and join that awesome coaching call, you're going to want to go to lovingonpurpose.com, click courses, and lead a class today. Okay, so we're going to jump into our testimony spot. Okay. And today, the testimony comes from Pedro. Testimony. Danny, your class on people helping people has been a tremendous blessing in my life and I know with the lives of people that I'm meeting with. And I would find, you know, as a pastor, you know, I meet with people day in and day out. And so... I felt like to be a good pastor was to work really hard on their problems. Like I'm being a good pastor because I care being a good pastor because I'm willing to work harder on your problem. And what I began to do is that I I was enabling their behavior and saying like, I'm going to work harder on this. You don't have to work anything on it. And so it left me with stress, left me with anxiety. It affected my home life where I wasn't being, being able to bring my full self to my family because I was worn out. I was stressed. But after hearing people helping people and applying those tools that are identifying the problem, but also to this is your problem and I'm only willing to work hard on this problem as much as you are. And so that has been the most freeing thing for me and it's been a powerful tool that I, I still use and that I know has impacted people because once they realize that they're powerful and they take ownership of their problems, I'm seeing lives being transformed. So thank you, Danny. Thank you, Brittany. And thank you, Kylo team, for doing all that you do is to provide us with the resources to be powerful people. <laughs> he is excited. Oh, you're it. welcome, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, well, that seems like an interesting insert in this conversation, but it's very much about that. Oh, yeah. Because when you 
talk to somebody that's kind of locked into the denial around the sexuality behavior in a dating relationship, that's exactly what happens mm-hmm. is you end up working harder than they are to get themselves out of that situation. You can you can say something, but when you hit that denial and they got that look on their face and they start calling you the problem, this is you throwing your pearls before swine mm-hmm. who uh, essentially trump you know trample that advice or input into the mud Mm -hmm. and then they turn and they start accusing you of being a religious freak or whatever whatever like okay well i won't be working harder on this than you do yeah i i I think that so many clients i have when we when i say that back to them they go oh that's right Mm. i know this one Mm. i have heard it Mm -hmm. and and just brings so much power and life and and really refreshing to man i don't have to own this I don't have to try. make you do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And there is this relief of pressure to fixing something that was never yours to fix yeah. and or to convince or to reveal. I, I mean, this is the, the part where we get in the throes of, you know, friendship and marriage or even your relationship with your child is, is you, we just get kind of smushed together and you start thinking, oh, this is ours. This is yeah. ours to work yeah. out. I love you so much yeah. that I'm going to try to control you. And, and when you're able to pull away from that and look at it objectively and have these tools like people helping people and you can see, I actually can't do anything about it. And I am exhausted, mm-hmm. frustrated. And I'm angry at you. And angry mm-hmm. and n- I'm no fun to be around. Mm-hmm. And, and that's very true to mm-hmm. what happens in relationships. And I think the same thing for all of you know, what we've been talking about with dating is being a powerful person is the best position you can take mm-hmm. when you are looking for somebody mm-hmm. to date or in a dating relationship. It is a it is a very helpful mindset of, okay, I'm looking for someone that's powerful as well. Yeah, and uh, obviously there's, there's sexual assault and battery, and that's not yes. what I'm talking about. But when you're in a relationship, you're not a victim. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you have a decision to make, and you're your boundaries will be practiced right here. If you are, are saying, no, I, that's not where I'm headed in this thing. I do really care about you, and I, this relationship's really important to me, but I'm looking for somebody who's going to help me protect our purity all the way to the wedding chamber. That's, that's who I'm looking for. So if that's not where you're headed, then I guess this is where we depart. Yeah. And that is that is real. I, I, That's the, hard to do. It is super hard to do. And I even think of so many different times where if you're not clear on this, you say, this is my line, this is my boundary, mm. and it gets tested and confronted. And, and maybe they're really great at convincing you or arguing a mm-hmm. point, and mm-hmm. so you adjust some. Well, once you adjust that line, it just displays that you will continue to adjust that line. Mm-hmm time and time again mm-hmm. until we meet where the compromise is and I get what I wanted from you originally. I may have had to do some work, but I got you to get here. And and this is also you're discovering the respect that this person has for your boundaries. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so if you, if you throw a boundary out there and they come right through it, please understand this is part of your future with this person. Yes. This is not a one-time deal. It's mm-hmm. a very likely something they do often, mm-hmm. and that should be your indicator. Yeah. But Pedro had great success with people helping people, which is super If fun. I have to become unchristlike mm-hmm. to keep this relationship, dump it. <laughs> there it is. There you have it. Dump it. It's a meme. <laughs> it, it might become one. Dump it good. <laughs> well, I think it's it's... It's fun to hear people discovering being powerful. It's fun to hear people giving it away. It's, and I, it's that for the singles is I, I want you to be powerful. Yeah. So it's awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us here at the Kylo Show. We will see you guys next time. And remember, our whole healthy families are going to save the world. Thanks for listening. Make sure to join us next week when Danny and Brittany talk about how to really get to know someone before entering a covenant relationship. 
Never miss an episode of The Kylo Show by subscribing to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. And don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to thekyloshow.com. The Kylo Show is produced by Ali Armading, co-produced by Ashley Beck, Leah Alexander, Anna Hill, Sherry Silk, sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.